Hi all, this is Jayashree Nayar. I have come to teach you the basics of chemistry as I have promised. Along with this, we will study a lot of amazing things about non-living world. Chemistry is all about studying the inner mechanisms of non-living things. A lot of wonders and surprises are there. Now, thinking about chemistry, what is the first thing coming to your mind? Oh, sorry, this is not an interactive class, so I have to answer my own questions, right? Fine. The first thing coming to our mind is periodic table. And it is a little scary for some of you, isn't it? But not needed. It is 108 elements, a beautiful turbul consisting of 108 elements with which the entire universe, including our body, is made of. The second question, whether you have to study all these 108 elements, not at all needed at any stage of your studies. I made a part of periodic table here, that is 20 elements are there and how they have arranged in the periodic table. This table will be of use. You have to study 20 elements and how to arrange them in the periodic table. Now let us see little facts about the periodic table. The vertical columns are known as groups. That means this is the first group. Hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium are coming in the first group. But don't study group wise. You should study it in an order so that automatically these groups will come, in, come to your mind. And the second group consisting of beryllium, magnesium, calcium. And this is the 13th group. So in between third, 3 to 12 groups we are not studying now, not needed now. This is 14 group, 15, 16, 17 and 18. These symbols and elements you should study. Next, these elements are categorized into metals and non-metals. We will see what are they. You cannot buy heart. These are metals, these are non-metals. It is not practical to buy heart. So from this level we will see. Group number 1 to 13 are metals. Now what are metals? What is the importance of metal? What characteristic makes these elements a metal? See a metal uh, is always a giver. When it gives, just like us, see we are made up of all these elements. So these elements will show the same characteristic as ours. Clear? If we give out something, a positive energy we will get. Isn't it? We will be happy about it. The same way, metals are always givers. When they give, what are they giving? They are giving electrons. When they give something, they will become positive. The same way, this metal, sodium, example I am taking sodium, atomic number 11. Okay, sodium will give out electrons. It is giving out electron and it will become Na+. Plus. So they are givers and they will become positive. And this category of elements, that is metals, are known as electropositive. Now next category, non-metals. From group 14 to 18 are non-metals. They are acceptors. They will always accept electrons. And they will become negative. For example, chlorine. Chlorine is an element. It will accept electron and will become Cl minus. It will become negative charge. And they are known as electropositive. Sorry, electronegative. Now, uh, this number, see hydrogen number 1. It is not just a number. It is their atomic number. And what is atomic number? What is the structure of an atom and all? I will take in the next class. Now I am explaining what all you will get from this table. Clear? Now next what are we going to get is valency. What is meant by valency? Valency is the combining capacity of an element. An element will react with another element to form a compound. This also coming in the atomic structure we will study in the next class. But now understand an element can react with another element 
and form a compound. But how many element an atom will combine with? That is valence. I can make a lot of friends. I can make 10 friends. So my combining capacity is 10. Some of you can make only one friend. That is your best friend. And your combining capacity is 1. That, that is because of many reasons. So that same way, some elements combining capacity is 1. That means valency is 1. Some elements combining capacity is 2. That means valency 2. What is the reason why the valency is different and all coming in the next class? Now let us see how easily we will remember the valencies of elements. So here the valency of all the first group elements are 1. I am writing here. Please write it down. And the valency of all the second group elements are 2. Valency of all the 13th group elements are 13 minus 10 is equal to 3. Valency of 14 group is 4. And valency of 15 group you will expect 5. It is not 5. 8 minus 5 equal to 3. Valency is 3. 8 minus 5. And this is 16. So 8 minus 16 equal to 2. 70. 8 minus 7 equal to 1. 80. 8 minus 8 equal to 0. What is the meaning of 8 minus 8 is equal to 0? That means these elements, helium, neon and argon, their combining capacity is 0. That means they will not combine with any other elements. That means they will not form compounds at all. They are inert or noble gases. Now next thing is oxidation number. These are the things very much needed for writing formulae. Uh, oxidation numbers. Oxidation number means valency with the charge and charge is decided by whether an element is metal or non-metal. So if it is metal, the charge will be positive. So uh, group 1 to 13 elements are metals, so their oxidation number will be positive plus. The oxidation number of first group elements are plus 1, second group elements are plus 2, third group element, 13th group elements are plus 3, and 14th group elements are not capable of making any charges. We will come to that point later and starting again with 15th group. 15th group is non-metal so it is minus. They are electronegative. So the charge will be minus. And 16th group is minus 2. 17 is minus 1 and this is 0. So, this many things you are getting from this table, all these things should be there in your mind so that studying about formulae, how to write formulae, how to write equation and all will be easy for you. So, today I am finishing off with all these details. We will see in the next class again. Before going, I want to ask you a question. Our air is made up of uh, many gases, mainly hydrogen nitrogen and oxygen and oxygen is the life supporting gas and it is needed for our respiration our daily activities but at the same time oxygen content in the atmosphere is only 21 percentage whereas nitrogen is not that important and it is an inert gas but its uh, composition is nitrogen is 78 percentage what could be the reason? There is a reason for everything from nature's side. Nature is made this universe very beautifully. So, uh, find out the reason why oxygen is only 21%. Why can't it be 78 or 80% so that uh, we will get more oxygen and it could have uh, supported our life more but it has not happened. What is the reason for that? Please find out and uh, write the answer in the comment box if you are not getting surely. In the next class beginning itself I will answer this question. Okay, all of you have a very nice day. Thank you so much.